welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have a puzzle that at first glance, well, it defies belief. Uh, this is by Ed Pegg Jr., a name I know will be familiar to many of you uh, who enjoy your maths puzzles especially. And yeah, th this this is definitely a form of miracle Sudoku because essentially the rule set that we, is going on here, I cannot believe that this puzzle exists in nature. It is an incredible, it's one of these puzzles a bit like the one we did uh, a week ago on Pi Day, where it seems to have been discovered rather than created. And what Ed has discovered here is ridiculous. And I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, over on Patreon this afternoon, we have released our solution video to the Wonders of the World Sudoku Hunt. So if you've not had a look at that yet, or if you've had a look at it and got stuck, do check out the video. Uh, that should explain everything. And a huge congratulations to the 330 or so of you uh, who are patrons of the channel and who correctly solved the hunt. That is fantastic work, well done. Um, now I can also give you a sneak preview today of what April's monthly reward is going to be. We're closing in fast on April, believe it or not. And some of you, if you've been following the channel for a little while, will remember this old chestnut. Ah, oh, seeing it brings me out in a cold sweat. This is Demono's Everything is Roggen puzzle, in which every single clue you can see in that grid is a lie. It led to a very long video and a lot of head scratching by me. I did get through it, which I'm actually quite proud of. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute beast and an incredibly clever puzzle. And Demono has made a sequel of this. And that is going to be our April reward. So that is a huge, huge, well, we're hugely proud to be able to showcase that. Uh, and that should be a lot of fun to see the reactions. So yeah, as I say, that's coming out at the start of April. Watch this space. Um, now, let's get back to Ed's puzzle and I will explain why I'm so baffled by this. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat along diagonals, except when they appear on an arrow, in which case they must repeat, but only in the cell indicated by the arrow and the digit i.e. that will give the direction and the distance of the repeated cell. So on this diagonal, for example, there can be no repeated digit except uh, the one related to this arrow. So if this square was a 3, we would, we would go in the direction of the arrow, 1, 2, 3, and we would have to have a 3 here, and this would be the only repeated digit allowed on this diagonal. On diagonals where there are no repeats and no arrows, there cannot be a repeated digit at all. And you can see there are an awful lot of diagonals in this puzzle that simply do not have a repeated digit. Now, this is, I mean, just think about it. The, the normal rules of Sudoku are hard enough where you can't have a repeated digit in a row, in a column, or in a box. But here, most of the diagonals don't have repeats on them either. And where they do have repeats, they're extremely limited. Um, it is incredible. The last part of the rules is that all of the numbers 1 to 8 must appear on at least one arrow. So, so basically, 9s never appear on an arrow, and 9s therefore can never uh, appear on the same diagonal in this puzzle. Now, the reason I am so shocked that this exists is that Mark and I, obviously, in our chess Sudoku app, we have a variant called Queen Sudoku, in which nines cannot touch or cannot see each other on diagonals. And creating those grids, the Queen Sudoku grids, is a nightmare, let alone adding on everything that Ed has added on here. This, it's quite stunning, quite extraordinary. Now, I have got an example. Ed kindly sent as an example. Now this example is nothing like as restricted as the real puzzle because in this example um, there are only three cells that are repeating on, on, on diagonals um, but obviously we there isn't an example of one two eight on every so there isn't an arrow if you like that corresponds to every digit one to eight. It, in this puzzle there are just three repeated digits on diagonals. This one you go in the direction of the arrow one cell and it repeats. This four, you go in the direction of the arrow four cells and it repeats. The seven works the same way, seven cells up here, it repeats. Other than that, 
there is no other repeated digit on the diagonal in this puzzle. And you can, you can look, it's really, really incredible. And in this puzzle, in our real puzzle, we have to put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on at least one arrow. And other than that, no repeats on the diagonals. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I am looking forward to this. Apparently this is doable as well. The testing reports say that this puzzle is not that hard. So, you know, a good one to try. The way to play is to click the link under the video. If I haven't said that already, let's get cracking. I get to play. And the first cell that catches my eye is this one, because this is telling us there must be a repeat on this diagonal and the repeated digit it's not toroidal so it's got to be this square here because it can't if we if we have higher than a one in this square we're going to go off the grid so this must be a one and the one must repeat here and other than that there's no repeated digit on this diagonal and the, that square therefore that clearly can't be a one because there's already a one in the box so that's a two go two on the direction of the arrow that's a repeated digit um, yeah okay this can't be a one or a two because it can't be there's a one or a two in the box already so that's a three because it can't be higher than a three that will take it off the grid so this square is a three it's very nice to get off to a reasonably swift start for a change um, two three these ones one two three four five they can be up to five I want ones that are pointing at the edge. This one, one, two, three. So this has to be one, two, three, or four. Oh, okay. This can't be one because that would put a one here, which is in the same box and in the same row as this one. It can't be two or three because that would put a two here or a three here. They would clash. So this is four, that's four. Um. Okay, where now? So this square can't be one, two, three, or four. Ah, yeah, hang on. Okay, this is a five because it can't be one, two, three, or four. And if it was six, it would go off the edge of the grid. So this is a five that just works. These two are probably restricted now. This square is not two look there's already a two on its diagonal so we're going to have to get used to diagonal scanning here this is not it's not one two or five this is three or four now one two three that would put a three here four would put a four here so there's a three or a four in one of these two squares i don't really know how to notate that this square this square can't be three because there's a three on its diagonal in this direction. So this is two or, f ah, so this is two. This is just is two, isn't it? It can't be four, it can't be one, it can't be five, it can't be greater than five. So this is two, that's two. So two in this box now. No, two in this box, I've got to be careful about this. You can't repeat the two on the diagonal again so the two is in one of three positions in um in box nine now where do we look do we do sudoku maybe oh no hang on i've got to put i've got to put six seven and eight on arrows still haven't i i've got one to, i've got one to five on arrows so far so eight must oh this must be eight sorry yeah i could have started here look eight where where on earth do you put an arrow that can go eight cells it must be it must be the whole diagonal of a grid so this was an eight right at the start that's an eight that's an eight seven presumably must be similarly that must be seven one two three four five six seven yes these won't be possible to be seven because you'll trip off the edge of the grid there's only six cells in rows one to six there is a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic um so one of these has to be six that one 
that one trips off the edge of the grid if you try and put a six here. So there's a six in one of those two. And one, two, three, four, five, six. That means there's a six in one of these two. And that means what? That means there's a six in one of these three. And an eight in one of these three. Look, because there's an eight there. Um, now, where do we look next? We can... Tempted to try and do some Sudoku here. I don't know if that's sensible. Three, maybe? Yeah, you see, where does three go in box seven? By Sudoku, we can eliminate these squares. But we can't repeat three on the diagonal, so it's in one of those two squares. And if it's here, ah, no, ha, it's not here. Because although in theory you can put a three here and that would work on this diagonal, it doesn't work once this is a three. Because you go doing, doing, doing. And there would be a three here and that three would clash. So you can't do that. That's lovely. So this is not three. Whoopsie, that one is not three. This must be a three. So now, now I can see three has to be in one of those two squares in um, box nine, because it can't go here because that's on the diagonal with this three. And three has to be in one of those two squares in box, um, box one. And that means, uh, four, is that restricted? Not quite. Okay. Three. Three in box five is restricted as well, because threes can't go there, and three can't go on the diagonal next to another three. There's no arrow. So three is in one of two places on this. Ah, yeah. Three is in one of two places on this diagonal. But the only repeat that would be allowed is if this is a three and this is a three. So you can't have a repeated three up here as well. There's no arrow pointing at this one. So this is not three. This is three. That's lovely. That gets me a six, eight pair in the box. Um, so that means those squares are four, five and nine now. This is not four. This is not five. Four, five, and nine. Okay. Um, where do we go now? We can... It's a strange thing because I'm, I'm not... I haven't got a grasp at all of where I should be scanning. I mean, I, I feel like two is restricted in this box. Um, but actually, it's not, is it? But it's a little bit restricted. It's in one of three places. Ah, this two is on the lead diagonal, isn't it? So that can't be a two. That's probably been sitting there for ages. Sorry, that's not a two. This is, this is a two. That's a three. So now two is in one of those two cells in box three. Let's check. Yes, this one sees that one, so it's not there. This must be a two. Now two is in one of two places, whoopsie, two places in box two. And one place in box seven, it's got to go there by Sudoku two places perhaps in box eight but let's check yes let's check the diagonal because that one is on the diagonal with this one so this is a two that's a two and I think with that flourish we have done the twos um, now let's check the threes because I got this three. Oh, that fits with fits with that one. Oh, now that's interesting this square can't be a three anymore once there is a three on this diagonal the only possibility that for another three on the diagonal is if if it's on an arrow that's pointing at it, that is the correct distance away. This one is not on an arrow, so that's not three, which means this is three, and that is the correct distance away. 
So threes now, I've got quite a few of those. This, yeah, I can't put three here. It would be on the diagonal, so that's a three. This is a three by Sudoku. This is a three by Sudoku. All the threes are done. So we've done all the twos. We've done all the threes. We've got... Still got three arrows to look. Maybe I should look at these arrows more carefully. Um, this square actually is quite restricted anyway. This square can be five, six, seven, or nine. Or it can't be nine, it's on the arrow. And it can't be seven, it's too far away. So this is just five or six. One, two, three, four, five would be here. Well, that's impossible, actually. This can't be 5, because if this is 5, now where do we put a 5 in row 3? The answer is nowhere, because you can't put a 5 in the same box as another 5. You can't put a 5 here, because of Sudoku. That would be on the diagonal with this 5. So this 5 actually does immense work. It rules out all four of those squares. So this is wrong, or wrogan, as Domano would say, and that means that's a 6. So now we get the six. Let me just, it is that one, isn't it? That's a six. Now those two squares must be a one seven pair to complete the row. This is probably being looked at by a one or a seven on some diagonal or other. Um, not sure. This one must be very restricted now. I mean, by Sudoku, it's very restricted. It can't be one, two or three or four. It would be on the diagonal. So it must be 5. It can't be 6 because that would clash and it can't be greater than 6 because it would go off the end of the grid. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a 5. 5 is now in one of those two cells by Sudoku. I'm desperately trying to spot the diagonals that are hitting that. Not seeing anything. 5 in this box is in one of those two squares. Again, I'm not sure whether that's actually being interfered with or not. Five in this box is in one of those two squares. Yeah, here we go. Where does five go in box two? This diagonal sees that one, so it's got to be here. That gives me the five down there. Five in box five is not here on the diagonal. It's not here on this diagonal, it's there, which gets this five as well. This is very approachable, and it's a lot of fun. It's incredibly clever. Um, I can get four in the top row now. There's a four locked out of this square. This four sees that on the diagonal, so the four is in one of two places in box seven. That rules that one out from being a four. In fact, that actually does better than I thought. I thought I was gonna get the four, but I actually get the five, the four, and the nine. So the four, the nine, these two squares are seven and nine now. Check the diagonals, can't see anything. Um, can we do anything with this six, eight pair? Is that telling us anything interesting? I mean, one thing I can see is it's ruling six and eight out of this square, for example, because this square sees a 6 or an 8 on the diagonal and a 6 or an 8 in the row. So whichever order this is in, you can't put 6 or 8 here. Not sure if that really restricts this square. Maybe I should just check. So it, can it be 1? No. It can't be 2, 3, 4 or 5 or 6. It's just 7 or 9. I feel like that's very interesting but it doesn't seem to do anything um what about this column look we need six eight and nine into those squares six is on the diagonal already because of this six so we can't have more sixes in in fact where does six go in this in this three by three box that would be a sensible question this six rules out those two this one can't be a six by sudoku you could just get the six. Oh, you could get really good at this if you practiced it nine seven eight all of those go in in a trice you get a nine here these squares are a snooker maximum one four seven 
And that's not four, is it? That's not seven by Sudoku. I'm trying to see whether these are seen by the thing. Can't tell. Um, okay. So have I gone done all the fives? I have. I've done all the twos. I've done all the threes. Fours. Are fours telling me anything? N yeah. No. Nearly. Very nearly. Fours are in locked into one of two places in box five. Four places in box six, I think. Um, I've got quite a lot of real estate down in row two. I need one, eight, and nine. So that square I can see definitely can't be nine because it sees a nine in the diagonal. It might, ah, no, it sees a one in the diagonal as well. This square is interesting. Look, it can't actually be one, it would see that diagonal. 9, this is just 8. So this square, these two squares now are a 1 and 9 pair. And okay, I mean the square that I, I see as interesting here is that square. Because this square can't be 1 or 9 anymore because again it's seeing both of those squares via its diagonal constraint. So this square might be restricted because it's not seeing 1 and 9 in the row. So this square, ah no this is a naked single. It's got those are six different digits and they are not 1s and 9s which can also be ruled out by the diagonal constraint. So the only thing that can go into that square is 4. Let's just prove that. So 1 would rule 1 out of both of those squares and break row 2. 2, 3, we think it is 4, 5 is ruled out, 6 is ruled out, 7 is ruled out, 8 is ruled out, 9 is ruled out. Lovely. That's a 4, that's a 4 therefore. Um, these squares are now known. Look, they've got to be 6, 8 and 9. And we should check all of the diagonals and all of the Sudoku. Um, those squares are a 1, 7 pair. That... Ah, what's that seeing? It must see something. I don't know that it does actually. Bobbins. Okay. Oh, look, that's a 179 triple. There's something easy, so that must be 6. That doesn't do anything. Um, I don't think. It locks a 6 into one of those two squares, which is probably being seen by a 6 on a diagonal somewhere, but I can't scan it and tell. Uh, I still need to put 8 into one of those two squares. Can I remove an 8 somehow? Yes, I can. Where does 8 go in column 6? It can't go there because it sees this little 8. So the 8 goes here. That locks an 8 out of that one. Gives us a 6-9 pair. Good. That gets us another 8. 8 now... Eight. Yes, 8 is forced in box 9 by the weirdities that are going on. It got to go here. 8 is forced in row 8 now. Um, 6 by Sudoku is locked into one of those squares which almost certainly we should check this one yes it sees it right along the diagonal that's a 6 that gets us the 6 and the 9 resolved this 9 sees that square on the diagonal so the 1, the 9 7, the 9 go in. This square must be a 1. That fixes the 1 and the 7 down here. We still need a 4 in that column and a 7. These squares now have got to be 4 and 9. Good, I can do those. 9, 4, 1 go into the grid. That gives us a 7 here. Um, and I think, I don't want to speak too soon, but it does feel like we're on the home stretch now. We've just got to do a bit of Sudoku to figure this out. This is a 1-6 pair. There's a 1 on the diagonal, so we can figure it out straight away. This column needs 6 and 7, which we can do. This column needs uh, something that I can't scan quickly enough. That's 9. 
these two square ah ha that's interesting we have a, a, a deadly pattern at the end let's get rid of the fours in those two squares like that so this must be resolved by no ah that I might have made a mistake here this diagonal is the last one if this was a one this one would be in the perfect position if it was a four that four is in the perfect position oh dear it needs to be another diagonal or I've messed this ah that that one oh thank goodness for that there is a four looking at this square so this square can't be a four that's a one that's a one that's a four that's a four and it was this diagonal that was the correct repeated digit on this one here that is just brilliant isn't it let's see if it's correct well that tells us the Sudoku is correct. I have no idea whether I've obeyed the rules correctly. I think I did. And I have no idea whether or not they're the only repeated digits are, are on the arrows. Maybe I should just take a moment or two to try and check it. Twos, there are no repeats on the twos. There's no repeats on the ones there. Five is repeated and it's the only repeated digit. Three is repeated. It's the only repeated digit apart from seven, I was about to say. And there is a seven here. That's useful. Um, four. That looks okay, doesn't it? That diagonal. Three. Yep, that looks all right. Five. One, six, two, seven, nine. Don't think I said a repeated digit there. Yeah, that looks good. Eight. This is the long diagonal. That looks fine. Four. Nine eight five one seven two two here four six yeah I mean I can't see a repeated digit I've obviously not checked all the diagonals there just the ones that had the arrows um, but it, that is quite unbelievable to me that is unbelievable that, that exists it is a beautiful puzzle very enjoyable to solve let me know in the comments how you got on with it and yeah hats off to Ed, Ed Peg Jr for coming up with that that is some discovery I uh, loved it, and we'll see you later on for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.